So welcome. Today we're going to talk about magnification and this concept of refereeing. And I'm here today with one of our master instructors, Tammy Grefkowitz, who holds a variety of credentials in uh, IPC certifications. So Tammy, tell me about some of the equipment that you might use to inspect printed circuit boards. All right. Well, basically, the, the smallest magnification uh, that I could inspect with would be the light ring, magma lamp, a lot of different names that they call them. And they range at usually about four times power up to six times power. And they usually have a light on them, so, you know, it's a lighted magnification. So, okay, so the other tool would be a microscope. And basically they range from seven and a half times power up to 40 times power, uh, the normal microscope. And uh, the other thing you could use is a eye loop. And they go right around 10 times power. That's pretty hard for an inspector. But you know, if I were a referee or something, you know, maybe I could use an eye loop. So, <laughs> you know, you talked uh, before about the different magnification levels. But how do you know when to use which tool based on the circuit board that you're inspecting? All right, well, the IPC A610 or, or the J standard, they both have uh, inspection tables in them. And the, the magnification is based on the land width of whatever you're inspecting. And of course, the circuit boards these days have a lot of mixed land widths, so I would inspect to the smallest land width on my board. And based on that, I would inspect, you know, just to say I'm between uh, 25, 0.25 and uh, 0.5 millimeters. In that case, I would inspect at 7.5 to 10 times power. I would have to use a microscope in that range. And sometimes, Tammy, I get, I get questions on this, that next column over with respect to refereeing. Can you describe what, what, when do I go to that third column? What does that mean? All right, well, maximum referee uh, is, it's a higher power. So we don't want to inspect all of our assemblies at a higher power because we will find defects where they really aren't defects. So the referee is only after the inspector has already determined it's a defect. Now, then the referee can make, turn it a higher magnification and confirm that it's a defect or maybe And finally, you know, when people are talking about the cleanliness of a print circuit board assembly, um, I'm constantly asked the question about flux residue. What should I inspect my flux for for flux residue on the board at? All right, there's also a, uh, a table uh, in the book, table 1-3, and it's called Other. The Other Table. I renamed it. <laughs> I call it the wishy-washy table because one of the things they are talking about is cleanliness on this table. And the reason I call it wishy-washy is because basically they're, t they're telling us that we should you know, inspect at like four times power. But then they have notes here. For instance, like in the no clean process, they have note one. And note one is telling me that I, if I have uh, fine pitch or high density assemblies, I may need to magnify it higher to see the flux residue. So that's kind of leaving it wide open for the inspector to magnify it at a higher range, higher than four times power. So if, if somebody, if a client were to come to you and ask you, how, Tammy, how do I inspect for cleanliness on this board? What do you advise given that this is the wishy-washy table? I would say don't inspect any higher than your inspection range on the other table. If you don't see the flux residue under your inspection power for your solder connection, then it's not there. Don't go any higher than your inspection range. That's what I would tell them. Well, thanks, Tammy, for, for your clarification of this section. And join us next time for our next discussion on different soldering tips.